Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So this week, what I've got is my daughter's laptop. And a little while back, she broke the, the screen on this or actually broke the hinge and the bezel on this. Um, I think she might've thrown it from her bunk bed down onto a beanbag chair, but she's probably not gonna admit to that. Anyway, it was really quite a mess. Um, the, the hinge on this side broke, uh, it was completely detached from the lower part here. So this separated and the, the back bezel, um, was off as well. And I looked into replacing the actual metal hinge, the bezel and the back, because the way that this works, the metal hinge actually screws into this back plate as well. So it would have been this entire back. Um, so she would have lost all her stickers, I guess, uh, the, the outer bezel and then the hinge. And it really wasn't a great design. And it, this machine was, I think, about two years old and it just didn't seem worthwhile doing that. My wife said, throw it out. I'm not good at throwing things away. So instead, what I did is I designed a set of braces for the side that hold it in a fixed open position and also hold the screen to the lower part of the, the laptop. So it is now, you know, just one single unit here with a fixed angle on the display. And I made sure that I have cutouts here for uh, the vents on the side, as well as where the power plug goes in and uh, the LED indicator light for charging. And it's quite sturdy. I'm not gonna try and bend this thing here on camera, but uh, even where it tapers down, it's quite strong. If I was to grab a hold of the screen here and try and bend it, it would still break, um, you know, where the transition here is from the, uh, the supportive bracket uh, to where the screen is. And there's one on each side. This side was a lot easier. There's not any ports or anything on this side of this particular laptop. There was the, I think they call it like a Kensington style security hole on this side where you could lock this. Um, but again, not an actual port. That's something that's integral to the laptop. Um, so let's talk a little bit about design consideration. Obviously, I didn't want the braces to be in the way. Um, so those are probably my two biggest considerations, the brace not being in the way and the brace, the brace being sturdy. And it is quite sturdy. Um, you see here from a thickness perspective, uh, it is fairly thick here where it needs to be um, to support both the, uh, the top and the bottom so that this can, thing can't rack with the lid. And then same thing for the, for the lid. And the curve in the inside here follows the curve on the, both the, the rear bezel of the laptop and the curve on the bottom of the laptop. That curve doesn't match quite perfect, but what I really wanted to do was just make sure I had enough meat here in this corner section uh, to support that. This is held in place with uh, clear silicone caulk. Uh, what I did was just, uh, once I had these two brackets test fit, this is iteration number two. Um, first one was close, but didn't quite fit and didn't have the curve. Uh, what I did was just apply some clear silicone caulk to uh, the areas around where the, the, the portholes were up here. And then on this side, uh, the entire uh, inside of this, and then just press them into place and I let it sit a couple of days. I don't think you could get these off of here now. Uh, that wasn't a consideration. I didn't intend it to be removable. This thing is just now gonna live out its life as a desktop essentially with a, an integrated screen versus a portable laptop. I guess you could still carry it around the house like this, but um, it doesn't fold up and go on a backpack anymore. All right, let's take a look at the actual design files for this and see if there's anything I missed and you can get an idea of what the inside surfaces look like. Before we go take a look at the design on the computer, I realized there's two things I wanted to mention. Um, I didn't tell you which specific model laptop this is. Um, I actually went and I looked through my purchase history and I actually bought this three years ago, time flies. So this, this laptop is three years old uh, and it is a model 15-BS121NR, it's an HP. So if you have the exact same laptop on the same problem, these braces are an easy print and um, we'll, we'll solve that problem for you. The other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, you notice the, 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 the brackets hold the screen fixed at a specific angle. If you don't already have one of these guys, uh, you gotta pick one up. Um, let me turn this thing on. So I have it in the, the closed position here, so it's gonna read zero degrees, but this is a, a digital angle finder. Uh, so what I did when I designed those braces is I got the laptop, I sort of held it in the position where the screen was comfortable to view from, you know, sort of a, 
uh, both the midpoint and then a little bit lower and a little higher than you would typically be. And then I measured that angle uh, with this and then just used the angle from this as I was designing it. Again, these things are great and they're, they're cheap. I'll link this down below, the specific one I have. Um, for the money, I thought this was the best deal, but if you get any one that's similar to this, I'm sure it'll work just fine. All right, let's get a look at that design. Okay, so here we are in Google SketchUp. This is the application I use to design this. And you can see the inside of this uh, follows the, um, the contour of the, the laptop. So where the, this is the, the screen portion up here, and then this is the body of the laptop down here. You can see where those two meet, it is a, you know, kind of a tight corner. Um, but on the bottom, the, with the screen open, the screen actually extends down below the body of the laptop, and this allows that space uh, while still maintaining a good amount of strength uh, down here in the bottom. Uh, you'll also notice, and I forgot to point this out on the actual laptop, uh, you notice that the thickness down here actually tapers down, and that's on purpose. And if we were to continue sort of this imaginary line um, in this direction, uh, that intersects where the rubber foot is on the front of the laptop so that this thing does not rock around um, on the desk or rock back and forth or sit with the, the front of the laptop actually up off the desk and that you know tries to push down when you're typing. Uh, this actually sets the angle as such that, uh, again, um, this sits flat on the desk, this bottom edge here, and then if we followed this imaginary line down here, uh, we would hit that rubber foot. So the rubber foot makes nice contact with the desk and keeps this thing from sliding around. I had entertained having a recess on the bottom here of this and adding some rubber feet, but the rubber feet on this particular laptop are so good in the front, uh, it doesn't move around, even losing the, essentially losing the rubber feet in the back since the rubber feet are up off the desk here in the back. So that is an important note. If you do try and decide uh, design one of these for a different laptop, make sure you take that into consideration. Uh, let's see what else. So as I showed you on the laptop, there's cutouts here for both the, the vents on the laptop, and this lines up exactly with the vent on the side, and then I just have it, um, you know, a nice relief here uh, to help uh, hopefully have less disturbance in the air as it pushes out. And then just from an aesthetics, you know, matching, and to make it easier to line up that plug, I did the same thing here for this. So I talked a lot about not wanting to interfere with the, the laptop, the use of the laptop itself. If you'll notice, I've made it thicker on the portions that you uh, that you don't see when you're using the laptop, the portion that extends underneath the laptop and the portion that extends behind the screen. Uh, that gives us some additional rigidity and allows us to make the front uh, a little bit shallower so that we keep it away from where your fingers would want to rest when you're typing. And I also even then taper down uh, here as a further relief just to make sure we stay out of the way. The first version of this I did, I actually had it uh, down a little bit further, probably about five millimeters further. And while it didn't cover the keyboard, it was in the area where you're, you're, at least when I type, that my pinky finger kind of naturally sits as I lift up off the keys a bit, and it just it didn't feel right, so I adjusted that. I uh, also have it tapering off here up at the, at, the, at the top. That's partly as an aesthetic and partly as kind of a strain relief, but the, the reality is the brace is so stiff that I don't think it really provides any strain relief. As I mentioned before, I think if we grab that screen and try and bend it, um, I don't think the brace would give it all. I think it would just break um, right here where where the, uh, the the brace ends. So this is only the left side pictured. Um, the right side is exactly the same. This the entire design is flipped uh, or mirrored, I should say. And then I just removed uh, the hole for the power jack and the vent hole as that side is solid. So as always, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate you watching all the way through. Uh, if you like this, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Um, again, lets me know you guys are interested in seeing this content, and I'll keep making sure a new video gets out every Friday. Keep printing, guys.